Hi there. So we're going to continue our discussion on the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis induction. In the previous video, we talked about cytochrome C, which is normally found in the mitochondrium, and exit the mitochondria into the cytoplasm upon induction of apoptosis, specifically the intrinsic pathway. And again, cytochrome C exits the mitochondria through channel proteins such as DDAC1, and many proteins associated with the mitochondrial outer membrane regulate VDAC1 channels, uh, the pro-apoptotic proteins, the anti-apoptotic proteins, they uh, battle over this channel, and if apoptosis is being triggered, it's because the pro-apoptotic proteins either increase in uh, expression or activity, and they allow the channel to open. And so now we're going to talk about what cytochrome C does uh, once it gets into the cytoplasm. So uh, we're redrawing that slide and just showing here uh, cytochrome C, which is, again, if a cell is alive and not undergoing apoptosis, cytochrome C is found in the mitochondria. But let's say there is a signal for the cell to undergo apoptosis because there's some stressful event, there's some DNA damage that might be uh, being detected. And so the channel opens because of the uh, activity of the pro-apoptotic proteins. And cytochrome C is now in the cytoplasm. What does cytochrome C do in the cytoplasm? So we're going to introduce a new protein called APAF1, which st APAF stands for ap apoptosis protease activating factor 1. So this um, protein is actually uh, can actually be trans uh, activated by the p53 transcription factor. If we recall, p53 can turn on many genes involved in apoptosis. APAF1 is one of those genes. So uh, if the cell is detecting stress via the p53 pathway. p53 will turn on Bax Puma and Noxa, which can help open the VDAC1 channel. p53 can also turn on the APAF1 gene, producing APAF1 protein. And now we're going to see what APAF1 protein does. So APAF1, found in the cytoplasm, cytochrome C, is now in the cytoplasm. And they assemble into this large complex seven APAF1 molecules and seven cytochrome C molecules form this new structure known as the apodosome, also known as the wheel of death. And it's given that name because under the electron microscope, this actually forms something that almost looks like a wagon wheel with a hole in the center. So what is the apodosome? The apodosome is a protease. What are proteases? Proteases are enzymes that cleave proteins. Do not confuse uh, the apodosome, which is a protease, with the proteasome. Now, the proteasome is also a large multi-subunit complex found in cells that degrades proteins. But those proteins that it de the proteasome degrades, those are ubiquitinated proteins. Sometimes some people say ubiquitinated, ubiquitinated. Same thing. When a protein has polyubiquitin tails attached to them, those proteins are sent to the proteasome, which degrades those proteins. This is not the proteasome. This is a complex, which is a protease, that we're only going to talk about having one substrate. It's going to cleave one protein. Now, before we talk about what the uh, apodosome cleaves, we have to cover a topic that um, you have most likely learned about in the biochemistry class, known as zymogens, or proenzymes. So zymogens are typically uh, proteins or other uh, um, uh, proteins that are typically enzymes or some other precursor. They're made, but they're not active. So a proenzyme, for example, uh, it's an enzyme. It has enzyme activity, but it is inactive. It's kept in an inactive state and requires some sort of biochemical modification in order to activate. So there are many instances in the body where uh, substances are created like proenzymes or prohormones, and they have to be processed in order to be active, be fully active enzymes or fully active hormones. So we're going to, and this is the concept of a zymogen. And so we're going to see this in apoptosis. So one way that proenzymes can be processed into active enzymes is by cleaving off an inhibitory domain. So I've drawn here an example, a theoretical example of a protein. Let's say it's a proenzyme, so it has an enzyme domain that has some catalytic activity. 
But another region of this protein, another stretch of amino acids, which folds up into some tertiary structure, has uh, inhibitory properties. So the way it folds and interacts with the rest of the protein, or maybe with other proteins, is it keeps this protein, uh, its enzyme domain, inactive. So this protein is made, but it is kept in an inactive form, so it is a proenzyme. So it has to be biochemically modified somehow in order to allow the enzyme activity to activate. And so uh, a classic example of this is using a protease to cleave a protein at a very specific region, and that will yield two proteins. So we take one large protein and a protease cleaves at a specific site, and now we have two proteins. We have a, a smaller region, a larger region, and you can see here the inhibitory domain has been released from the enzymatic domain, and now the enzyme domain is active because the inhibitory domain has been released. So this is one example of how proenzymes can be activated by a protease. And we did just see a protease here called the apodosome. So let us introduce a new protein. That protein is called caspase 9. So caspase 9 um, it is a protein. It is found uh, in the cytoplasm. Now you'll see it says ACE, uh, caspase. So that should give you a hint that it is an enzyme. When it is synthesized, it, is, it has an uh, inhibitory domain on it. So when we talk about caspase 9 being first made, it's typically in its pro form. So we actually say it's pro caspase 9. It has a domain on it that is, keeps it in an inactive state. I haven't told you what the activity of caspase 9 is. It is an enzyme, but I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. I will tell you that the apodosome cleaves caspase 9. So when the apodosome forms, again, seven APEF1 molecules, seven cytochrome C molecules, the apodosome will bind pro-caspase 9 and cleave it. And when it cleaves it, it cleaves the inhibitory domain off. So you are left with active caspase 9. So a region that has the catalytic activity of caspase 9 uh, is isolated from the rest of the inhibitory domain, and now caspase 9 has become activated. So caspase 9 is a classical example of a zymogen or a proenzyme. Now it is time to talk about what kind of enzyme caspase 9 is. Caspase 9 is a protease. Now don't let this confuse you because we just had a protease the apodosome, cleave and activate a protease, caspase 9, which is going to cleave and activate more proteases. This is known as a protease cascade. Those of you who are familiar with the raf mec erk pathway have heard of something known as a kinase cascade. RAF kinase will phosphorylate and activate mec kinase, which will phosphorylate and activate erk kinase. That is a kinase domain. It allows for amplification of a signal. Same thing here. We're going to have a protease, cleave and activate some protease, which is going to cleave and activate more protease. So we're going to have an amplification of a signal here using proteases. So caspase 9 has been activated. It is a protease. What do proteases do? They bind to and cleave proteins. So I'm going to tell you what caspase 9 cleaves. It doesn't cleave lots of every protein. It cleaves only proteins that fit into its active site. So now we're going to introduce three new proteins. Caspase 3, Caspase 6, and Caspase 7. Uh, caspases are a large family of proteases. There are at least 10 caspases made by human cells, and we're not going to talk about all of them in this video. We're going to just talk about caspases 9, 3, 6, and 7. So caspases 3, 6, and 7, just like caspase 9, when caspases are made, they are made in their pro form, so they have a domain on them that inhibits the activity of the uh, caspase enzyme. So if cells are not undergoing apoptosis, if cells are alive and happy, caspases are all in their pro form, they have their inhibitory domain on them, they're not active. Well, here we've got a signal to undergo apoptosis. The apodosome is formed, it has cleaved procaspase 9 and activated it, now we have active caspase 9. What is caspase 9 going to do? It's going to act upon its substrates, which are Procaspases 3, 6, and 7. And it is going to cleave them, it is going to cleave the inhibitory domains off of caspases 3, 6, and 7. So now you are left with active caspase 3, caspase 6, and caspase 7. 
And these are also, yes, proteases. So we have a protease, the apodosome, which will cleave and activate a protease, caspase 9, which will cleave and activate proteases, caspases 3, 6, and 7. This is a protease cascade. And this allows for amplification of a signal. You just need a little bit of protease, a little bit of, sorry, I shouldn't have said proteasome. You need a little bit of a protosome to cleave a little bit of caspase 9, to cleave a bunch more caspase 3, 6, and 7. And now you can trigger apoptosis because what these caspases are going to do, and again, they are proteases, so they're going to cleave things. They have hundreds of targets, and they are responsible for executing the destruction of the cell the destruction of the nucleus, the destruction of DNA, the destruction of the cytoskeleton. These proteins, caspases 3, 6, and 7, execute the program of the destruction of the cell, and they are given the name executioner caspases. And in, the, in another video I will post, we will talk about some of the substrates of the executioner caspases. They carry out the execution of the cell. Caspase 9 just initiated the activation of the execution of caspases. So caspase 9 in this uh, pathway, the intrinsic pathway, caspase 9 is known as the initiator caspase. We'll see in a different pathway, the extrinsic pathway, there are different initiator caspases, but the same execution or caspases. Again, a caspase 3, 6, and 7, they're going to cleave hundreds of targets, which are going to be uh, the uh, proteins that get destroyed that allow the, for the collapse of the nucleus, of the cytoskeleton, the destruction of the DNA. So caspases 3, 6, and 7 really do the work of destroying the cell. Um, but how did this all start? It started from cytochrome C exiting the mitochondria. And again, we covered that in the previous video, how um, proteins in the mitochondrial membrane regulate cytochrome C leaving the mitochondria, and once my cytochrome C enters the, the cytoplasm, if it can join with APAF1, this chain reaction, this signal from the apodosome to caspases 9 to caspases 3, 6, and 7 will result in the destruction of the cell and apoptosis. So like I said in, an, in another video, we'll talk about execution of caspases, what they actually cleave, and in another video, we'll talk about the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis induction, which uses a different initiator caspase.